Hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude1814 here, and in this week's video, we're going to be doing a reptile room tour. Now, I am aware that I haven't done a reptile room tour for quite a few months, and the truth is, I haven't had a lot of updates. However, this has been a really busy summer, there has been a lot of updates, so I figured I would wait a few months, make sure everything is sort of established, and now I can actually give a proper room tour with all the new stuff that has happened. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So first off in the tour, we're going to be discussing Hash here. Now Hash is one of my two snakes that I currently own, and he is an adult male Okati corn snake. Now one thing that I definitely think is unique about him is he is actually a genetic runt. So he's perfectly healthy, but he's a little bit skinnier than your average corn snake. He's only about the thickness of less than a golf ball, which my other corn snake, which you will see after him, is what would be considered normal size. However, he eats, he poops, he does everything a corn snake should be. He's just a little bit smaller, which if I was breeding, that would be a bit of an issue. However, he is just a beloved pet, and you're definitely one of my favorites. One thing that I think is really cool about him compared to other corn snakes is that he actually has more of a brownish or tan color. He's not that typical bright orange that an Okati should have. However, I think that's just a very unique trait about him. His current habitat that he is in is a 40 gallon Zilla Critter Keeper. It is one of the older models, so it has a full glass front and a sliding screen top. The tank dimensions are three feet long, it goes 18 inches deep, and then it's about 16 inches tall. So he's got plenty of floor space as well as plenty of climbing room. I do have various branches scattered throughout the habitat, as well as his leaf background that I made using Exoterra vines. He's able to climb all around that. As for lighting this guy, I am currently using a 30 inch Zilla Pro Soul with a timer. He has a 25 watt mini halogen bulb, giving him some basking heat. It's not a lot of heat to where it makes a temperature difference, but just enough to where it creates heat in conjunction with the heat mats to give him a nice thermal gradient during the day as well as a basking spot. And then of course for the rest of the habitat, I'm actually lighting it using UVB. A lot of people do not use UVB with their snakes, however I think it greatly benefits them. They will be exposed to it in the wild, so why not give it to them? Especially again, in my case, I'm not breeding, I'm not dealing with hundreds of snakes. So with the two that I currently have, I might as well give them the added benefit just for the sake of it. So moving on to my second snake, this here is Vegas. He is my second adult male Okati corn snake. And as you can see compared to Hash who was shown previously, he is much larger. He is what would be considered an average adult male. Now what I definitely really like about him is the color on him. He is a gorgeous bright orange, that classic Okati corn snake coloration. And he really shows it. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, it's just beautiful overall. I don't really keep a lot of morphs. You may notice that a lot of my collection is of the wild type. I love it. It's the way they would be in nature, so why not, you know, keep the ones that you naturally see when you go out herping, per se. Vegas, like I said, is the larger of the two. He's about five feet long, stretched out, so he's a pretty big boy. He's currently feeding on jumbo mice at the moment. Uh, Hash, on the other hand, is eating large. As for his habitat, just like Hash, he is in a 40 gallon. His tank is a bit different. I actually was lucky and I won it over the summer, but it is one of the newer Zilla model tanks. It's front opening, it's got a bunch of cool features, and I really like it a lot. It really makes cleaning easy, access to the habitat in multiple ways, so I really can't say no to winning an awesome tank like that. It was truly a great habitat and he really likes it. It came with a really nice rock background so he'll rub against that when he's shedding and then of course the lid is unique because it actually has humidity inserts so I can cover half of the screen when he is getting ready to shed for some higher humidity. As for lighting and heating, he currently has a heat mat and a ceramic heat emitter plugged into a thermostat and then for lighting I have again a 25 watt mini halogen bulb to give him that little bit of basking heat that he likes and then a UVB bulb. The reason I do not have a full coverage ProSol on his tank is because there's a divider in the middle of the screen and the weight of the ProSol actually will weigh down that and I don't need that melting the plastic. So overall, this has been Vegas, my second corn snake. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys, he's awesome and I love him to death. So moving on to our third reptile, this here is Rocky, the bearded dragon. He's just like your average happy, awesome little bearded dragon. He eats, he does everything a bearded dragon should be. 
And of course, being a bearded dragon, he has this super chilled demeanor where all they do is sit. And that's what I love about him. He is a lazy, cute little boy. Like I said, he loves his doobie of roaches. He's got all the fun stuff. So he's definitely one of the cooler guys in the collection. As you can see, he's got his cute little chin. He loves his little chin rubs. Rocky's so adorable. As for his setup, he is also in a 40 gallon and he does in fact have a Zilla Prosol on there with heat and UV and everything that a bearded dragon needs. What I really like about the Prosol in his case is that being a bearded dragon, they need it dry and usually if you use a hot bulb, that's going to dry out the air. What the Prosol does is it actually has heat distributed for about two thirds with this hot basking spot a medium type heat bulb that'll keep him nice and warm and then of course no heat on the cool end to make sure he can thermoregulate however with that mix of heat it actually keeps his tank nice and dry so even during the summer months when the house is using air conditioning I don't worry about his tank getting too humid so that's pretty nice and again that's what I really like about those prosol fixtures that they can evenly distribute heat and light for all the reptiles as you can see he's trying to move around fit himself comfortably onto the hand right here. So that is Rocky. He is an awesome little guy and I have to definitely say he's one of the favorites in the collection. He's just so cute and adorable. So for the fourth reptile in the collection we have Harriet. She is my female Chinese water dragon. So I don't always pick favorites but what I can tell from the channel views she is definitely a people's favorite. I know you guys love her a lot. She is a super cool lizard and I can't blame you. However, with being a super cool lizard, she's also incredibly difficult to care for. Definitely not a beginner lizard for those of you who are watching this video for the first time and looking at different varieties of lizards to keep. I would recommend something like Rocky the Bearded Dragon to start out with. However, she is definitely a very unique lizard. She's got a lot of personality and she's definitely been a challenge to keep in captivity. As you guys can see, Chinese water dragons are known for being that bright green color. She looks a bit dull because she's actually going through a shedding cycle. So she's got bits of skin peeling off of her tummy right now and then she still has yet to shed the back top of her body. However, if you guys have seen previous videos that I have filmed her in, before her shed cycle she is that classic bright green for a water dragon. Her habitat was actually a custom built designed vivarium built by my dad and I. Because these lizards are active and need a lot of space. Her vivarium is four feet long, two feet deep, and five feet tall. I have her being heated using a 150 watt ceramic heat emitter controlled by a hygrostat which monitors her temperatures and humidity and that is regulated again by the ceramic heat emitter and the repti fogger and then for basking heat I'm using two 50 watt Zilla mini halogens. So she's a really cool lizard, definitely one of my favorites in the collection and obviously a people's favorite. So last but certainly not least, we have Jasmine here, the Crested Echo. She is a partial pinstripe harlequin and she is gorgeous. I got lucky enough, she's currently fired up right now on my fingers so you can see that dark chocolate color that she has as well as that partial stripe down her back. So she is definitely a gorgeous little gecko. Her habitat that she's in currently is an exoterra 12 by 12 by 18 front opening terrarium. She's got various vines and logs and stuff to climb on there. And she's actually currently feeding on Pangea, which is a type of crusty gecko diet. We didn't really try Rapashi because I'm aware that Rapashi comes in one flavor. Pangea has multiple. So she does sometimes get bored of one flavor and flavor gets switched around. But either way, she is an awesome little gecko. As you can see, she's just crawling around on my hand right here. She might actually try and jump. But I'm... Uh, Definitely a very cool little animal. The New Caledonian geckos in general, crest geckos, lychees, gargoyles, they're all very unique and the colors that they all come in are amazing. And like I said, even though she's not a wild type gecko, um, uh, she's still that lovely harlequin coloration. So definitely a beautiful gecko and definitely an animal that I really appreciate in the collection. Crested geckos are actually one of the few geckos that as soon as they drop their tails, they actually cannot regenerate it. So that's definitely something to keep in mind and that's why I do not handle her often. She's sort of more of a display pet just because she's got that beautiful tail pattern and quite frankly, I do not wish for that to fall off. So yeah, 
she's pretty awesome. So overall guys, that actually wraps up our reptile collection video. I know it's sort of a short collection, however, I really wanted to go a bit in depth on the animals, their setups, to give you guys truly a full update on them. Really, I enjoy keeping reptiles. I hope I maybe have inspired a few of you guys to try and keep reptiles in the future. They really are a unique pet. They're still an animal, so obviously make sure you do your research beforehand. However, I thought sharing my collection would sort of influence you guys. Until then, though, guys, if you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button on my channel. I greatly appreciate it, all the support you guys give. And overall, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Snake Dude 1814, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.